Collagen is one of today's most popular nutritional supplements. Look good, think feel good, mobility, think okay, joy. I love and have the best results with collagen. It's all the hype at the moment. Every second housewife and her best friend is recommending the use of collagen supplementation. Global sales have reached all time highs. So the question on the table for today is, does collagen supplementation really bring all the benefits it claims to bring? I wanted to know what the science has to say. In all honesty, people's opinions, they're subjective. How a supplement makes you feel is irrelevant because there's just way too many factors that play a role on how we feel. And therefore I wanted to do a scientific deep dive on how collagen supplementation really works and whether we're wasting our money throwing it down the drains or not. Just like I did in my Science Explained video of that miracle weight loss injection, Ozempic, we're going to be doing a deep dive into the inner workings of how collagen supplementation can have an effect on our beautifully complex bodies or not. Let's dive into it. Let's look at collagen first. Collagen is a protein. Most people know that optimal amounts of protein in your skin makes you look fresh and young. Collagen in your joints keeps your joints strong and healthy and collagen in your hair and nails make them grow and shine. So many people drew the connection saying if I eat more collagen, my hair, skin and nails would look fantastic. But can we really draw that connection? Well, first we have to look at how collagen works. Collagen, the molecule, is made up of a bunch of amino acids, like all proteins are. And collagen proteins can be found in places like animal products, such as steak and chicken. Now here's where things get a little bit tricky. When we eat collagen protein, it enters the stomach. And then the stomach acid, along with proteases, break down the protein into individual amino acids. These amino acids can then pass through the actual arterial wall and enter into the bloodstream. These individual amino acids then go wherever they're needed in the body. Like, for example, collagen synthesis in places where joints may be damaged or skin needs to be repaired. Collagen synthesis takes place in fibroblasts and at connective tissue sites themselves. Now, what most people seem to overlook is that little part where it says the proteins get broken down into amino acids, building blocks, and then gets used in the body for synthesis of proteins. You see where collagen doesn't pass through that blood barrier. So fact number one is collagen cannot be absorbed in the stomach. It has to be broken down into its amino acid components. And fact number two, the body decides whether it synthesizes, builds collagen or not. So at the moment, it doesn't really have a very strong pull towards having to use collagen for collagen synthesis. Any protein seems to be able to work. Something to keep in mind is that when our body goes through the process of aging, its cells naturally starts producing less collagen. This is a genetic factor that we cannot control. So whether you drink a shake or eat a steak, there's no difference in the amount of collagen your body will use to keep your skin healthy and your joints healthy and your hair growing. People who do not consume the full spectrum of amino acids, however, for example, vegans will see a decrease in the synthesis of collagen. So my top tip would be, to not be a vegan as I do explain in this veganism explained video where I dive into all of the pros which there are many and cons of veganism. Now to be honest this is where I thought the crux of my story would end. I thought that science had everything to show me however recent studies came out and the rabbit hole goes way deeper than I thought. Collagen supplementation is looking to be really useless. Let me show you why. Let's talk about a very important amino acid called leucine. This graph shows the different amount of amino acids that you can find in whey protein, which is a very popular protein that most people use and that the science says is a great protein to use, and collagen, which a lot of people also use. However, I'm convinced they're being scammed. Look at the content of all of the amino acids. Now what's interesting about collagen protein is that it contains very little amounts of an amino acid called leucine. Leucine has been found by scientists to be the biggest stimulating amino acid for what we call protein synthesis. Now protein synthesis is basically just tissue building or muscle building. When scientists look at proteins, they use the total amount of leucine present in a protein as the indicator for whether a protein has a high anabolic factor or not, basically indicating whether a protein is likely to stimulate growth or not. Collagen protein has very little leucine amino acids in its makeup, which makes me further question the worth of this pretty expensive supplement that a lot of people have been taking. 
You see, leucine is an interesting amino acid because it really isn't used in the body for actual building of muscle tissue. However, scientists believe it's the most important amino acid involved in the process of building muscle. The process looks like this. Inside the muscle, we have what is known the mTOR pathway. This pathway is responsible for a signaling cascade, which basically tells the body to build more muscle. Tough workout sessions and strenuous environments challenge the body and requires the body to adapt and get stronger in order to handle the next session. The mTOR pathway is what gets triggered by the strenuous event, which then makes the body build more muscle to get stronger. Now where leucine comes into the mix is through the process where leucine inhibits the inhibitors of the mTOR pathway. So basically leucine is like the good guy standing next to the Formula 1 fence on the racetrack, keeping all the bad guys away from the track in order for the F1 driver to put his impressively fast car through very impressive corners to win the race. Without leucine present, the mTOR pathway will be blocked more frequently, resulting in poor muscle adaptation and very slow growth. And this isn't just for bodybuilders, it's for us normal people too. If our bodies don't have the optimal amount of building blocks available, we won't recover optimally. Our sleep will be bad, our hormones will be all over the place, and overall we just won't be having a great time. The blatant truth I came to through doing my research on collagen supplementation is that it's a bunch of nonsense. To be quite honest, it's pushed by massive corporations trying to make as much money as possible through people who believe it'll help their joint health and their skin health and a bunch of other things that it truly doesn't. Collagen cannot go through the stomach wall into the blood, meaning it has to get broken down into amino acids. So if you're using that for amino acids, you might as well just use chicken or steak or a whey protein shake that's much cheaper than a collagen shake. This video might be stepping on a bunch of people's toes because they've spent a lot of money and they might have felt a few of the results that's promised through the use of collagen. However, the science is very clear. There's no difference between a collagen shake and a normal shake or just normal food. And speaking about videos that's going to step on some people's toes, I'm doing a video on menopause next and hormone replacement therapy. If that's something that interests you and how the whole female hormone cycle works, make sure to stay around for that video. Click on the subscribe button below. I'll see you in the next video. I'm going to go do some more research. This was Stefan, out.